So today we're going to talk about reflection and refraction, um, both of which have to do with light moving from a, uh, or encountering a barrier between two different substances um, or media uh, which have different indi indices of refraction. Um, we're going to talk a little bit what th about what that means in a bit. So if I have a, a surface and I have light that comes in, uh, we can say this, this is called a light ray, uh, we just model it as kind of a, a beam of light, uh, and it hits the surface, it's going to bounce off. Right? Um, and this isn't just for mirrors. The reason you're able to see objects is because everything reflects light. Um, so, well, black, I suppose, absorbs it all, but yeah, that going in and this coming out, uh, and this is reflection. Uh, the really only part of reflection that is, is important here, um, besides the conceptual fact that everything, um, you know, you're able to see objects because of reflection, um, is that the, there's, we draw a perpendicular line um, relative to this surface. Okay? We draw the perpendicular line and it meets where the light bounces off. And we call the angle between the perpendicular and the ray, we call it uh, the angle of incidence. Um, which is also can be written theta sub i. Okay? And that's because this ray here is the incident ray. You might guess that this ray is the reflected ray. And therefore, this is the angle of uh, reflection. Okay? And these two angles are the same. Um, and this is important. So the in angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Uh, the angle in is equal to the angle of. Uh, by extension, these two uh, are also equal. <clears throat> but these are the ones that, that, these are the angle of incidence and, and reflection. Good. So reflection is pretty straightforward. That's really all there is. Um, refraction gets a little bit more interesting. So let us look at refraction. So I'm again going to have a barrier separating two media. Uh, and these two media, um, they, light travels through them differently, okay? Uh, and the kind of, uh, you can think of this like um, if you had, uh, you know, you're running through, you're running across the street, you're running down pavement, and then all of a sudden you run in through a patch of mud. That mud, it has a different feel to it than does the street, and you're going to stick, and it's gonna, you're going to slow down a little bit. Um, and light, you can imagine, might travel more easily through air than it does through water, right? Um, we call this the, the index of refraction, um, which let me define refraction first. Refraction is the bending of light, uh, or the, the change of direction, Really, a, a wave as it moves from one medium to another. Okay. Uh, the index of refraction uh, is a measure. It's a measure of how much light bends. How much does the light uh, bend or change direction? So how much it refracts. I'll just write that. It's a measure of how much the light refracts. So different media have different indices of refraction. Um, the, the real mathematical definition of this is we use n, or index of refraction, and it's going to be equal to uh, the wavelength of the, of the light in the vacuum divided by the wavelength of light in the medium. So for the, if, if it's traveling through a vacuum, then you can see that this is going to be equal to 1, because it's traveling through the vacuum, and it's the ratio of its wavelength of vacuum to the vacuum, so it's 1. Um, but most other substances do not have a wavelength of 1, have an index of refraction of 1. Um, the two we're going to see the most are air which we actually can approximate as 1, um, because it's actually 1.0002, which for the most part, really, we don't care about. 
Uh, and then water has an index of refraction of uh, 1.33. Okay. So I'm again going to have a light ray coming in here. Okay. And a portion of this ray will reflect back. But we're not interested in that right now. We're interested in uh, the refraction. So I'm going to draw a perpendicular line. And it's going to come in at some angle. I'm going to call that angle theta 1. And then it's going to refract. It's going to change direction. And maybe it'll do this. And call this theta 2. So the angle changes. Uh, let's say that this is going to be air. So I'm going to say n1 is equal to 1. I'm going to say n2 is equal to 1.33. Uh, and the last thing that, that changes uh, is the velocity. So I'll say this has velocity v1, and this has velocity v2. Okay. Um, now, if we want to figure things out, we want to solve for different, uh, different values here, there's something called Snell's Law, which is going to help us out a lot. Um, Snell's Law uh, says that the ratio of the angle of incidence over the angle of uh, refraction is equal to the same ratio um, as, uh, so this, sorry, this ratio is equal to also to the ratio of the velocities, v1 over v2. And both these ratios are equal to the opposite ratio of the indices of refraction. Okay? So this is Snell's law. Um, and this is useful because now we can say, hey, let's say I send in light at an angle of 45 degrees, uh, and let's say, uh, let's actually, yeah, let's say 45 degrees, um, and I want to know what is the angle going to be over here. So we say, okay, well, I, I am given both indices of refraction, uh, and I have one of the angle, I want the other angle. So I'm just going to pick the relevant parts of Snell's Law, uh, and then I can solve this. I can say, well, I'm going to have sine of 45. Uh, divided by the sine of theta 2 is equal to 1.33 over 1. So uh, solving this, you have sine theta 2 is equal to, uh, sorry, no, is equal to sine 45 divided by 1.33. Uh, and then to actually get angle 2, you need to take the inverse sine of both sides. So theta 2 is equal to the inverse sine of sine 45 over 1.33. Okay, and you plug that into your calculator and, and get an answer. I think it comes out to be uh, something like 32.1 degrees. Um, so you can see that it that it does change direction and bend. Um, and you can do the same thing uh, if you wanted to know instead. You wanted to know how much the velocity changed. Um, you can even figure out how much wavelength changes because you have this relationship uh, between the index of refraction and the wavelength. Um, so you have a few different things that you can play with here. Um, but basically, anytime you see a problem like this, you're going to be given probably three of the values, and you're going to want to find a fourth. Um, and generally, that fourth value will correspond. So you'll be given two that go in one ratio, one of the others, and you'll be asked for the corresponding one. And you'll just take the segments of Snell's Law that are important, um, that are required to solve your equation, uh, and you'll be all set. Uh, and that's basically all of uh, reflection and refraction that, that you need to know.